one of our exhibitors is Navistar. I've got Dean Opperman with me today. Hi, Dean. Hi. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. Tell us what you do at Navistar, first off. So uh, my job at Navistar is to try and understand what the new technologies are coming to our marketplace and understand what the cost benefit of those technologies are so that we can give a, the best value to our customers uh, in our future products. Um, you guys have one of the coolest booths here. Tell us what you brought. Missy, I brought my favorite vehicle here. It's uh, the Navistar Super Truck. It's named Catalyst. Um, it's named Catalyst for a reason, uh, and that's because it is the catalyst for change uh, for our new technologies going into the future. Um, so first thing when you look at it, it looks a little bit different. Tell us about the aerodynamics. So I have a great team of engineers that worked on this vehicle. And one of the low-hanging fruits for improving the freight efficiency of the vehicle is reducing the aerodynamic drag. You can see that in the beautiful shape lines and the smooth curvature of the new body and uh, with the added features uh, on the trailer as well, the, the side skirts, the uh, gap treatment, and the extended bo um, boat tail as well. Is the shape the only thing that helps with the aerodynamics? No, we have actually a special feature that's uh, very unique to the Navistar Super Truck, and that is we have actually pitch control uh, in that at higher speeds, it literally changes shape. It drops the front of the vehicle and it drops the trailer to try and generate uh, an airfoil across the top of the, of, of the vehicle. It, it actually reduces the drag significantly. Sounds very futuristic. Yeah, yeah. So here at McLeod, we're really big, obviously, into technology and, yep. and new things. It doesn't really look like it used to. It looks like there's something missing. There is something missing. Um, and I think uh, the, the most attention is, has been uh, garnered around the lack of rear view mirrors. Um, Actually, I think it's probably best if we walk over and, and I show you them in person. Can you? Yeah. Oh, great. Let's, yeah, go. let's go. This is amazing in here. A little bit like a cockpit of a fighter jet, right? It really <laughs> does feel that way. Not what I was expecting with the screens no, and no, everything. No, it's, it's very comfortable. There actually are a lot of unique um, facets to taking away the, cam the mirrors from the system and adding cameras. A couple, of, so just to explain the situation here, right, we have our standard mirror set in two cameras that are, that are uh, displayed on either side in very similar locations to where you're used to seeing them uh, already. And then we have actually a very unique um, a blind spot camera that really helps with maneuverability uh, with these big vehicles like this. Is this on my right side over here? This is on the right okay. side, right? I can always see on this side, so that, that, that becomes a trouble point, right? Small children, curbs, so on and so forth. Right. So I, I use it quite a bit because I'm an amateur truck driver, to, to <laughs> say the least. But some of the other unique facets about this are the fact that in a production truck, you can't see through what we call the A-pillar, which is the structure between the windshield and the side glass. And you also can't see through the mirror that extends out. So you lose a lot of the visibility out here. This gives us the opportunity to stack those two features. And now we only lose visibility through this A-pillar. And so the, as you can see, the, the world opens up to us, so to speak, and we have much better visibility. It really does. Uh, this vehicle uh, was the first vehicle to uh, demonstrate and uh, develop our predictive cruise control um, system. Predictive cruise control is the next generation in cruise control. Uh, when you set cruise control in your car, you set it at 65 miles an hour probably, and it stays fixed. Maybe 65. Maybe, maybe a little more, maybe but we so. won't, yeah, we won't that's but it stays fixed. It's always running. It doesn't care if it's climbing a mountain or going down a hill. It stays at that, that speed. Our predictive cruise control has maps and GPS locations, so it knows where it is on the planet, and it knows what the topography of the road is, the three, three kilometers ahead. And it adjusts the speed of the vehicle to optimize fuel economy over that entire road, and it's continually calculating thousands and thousands of calculations per second in, in optimizing the fuel economy. So to bring this down to someone that, that's not as familiar, I liken it to riding a bike, right? If you're riding a bike and you see a big hill coming, you don't you, slow down, no, you, you pedal speed. faster before you get to that hill. 
this this vehicle does a very similar type of activity so you'll see it um, actually adjusting its speed for no apparent reason but trust that it's doing it because there's something happening miles ahead this is unbelievable so we use that technology as sort of a jumping off point right so now we have all this information we can use that to capture energy on downhills more effectively, um, to prepare the engine uh, through water pump and advanced cooling techniques to better be prepared for when uh, these hills, uh, 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 when we approach these hills and the engine gets overloaded with heat, um, so to try and minimize the time that the fan is on, and, and all these accessories that um, take power away from the vehicle we we try and minimize and uh and pcc is a big part of that so you ready to go for a ride you want to start it up really i would love to <laughs> i'm just going to turn the key yeah oh gosh it's ready just a car. here we go mm -mm. have fun <laughs> you ready to go yep let's Put go drive let's go 